Welcome to another Corgi video tutorial where we show you how to extract sprite animations out of XML or JSON sprite sheets. We already have a video, which we will link in the upper right corner, which explains how to extract sprite animations from plain image files using manual coordinates, but using a pre-made XML or JSON is much more convenient. These sprite sheets can often be obtained from paid or free assets from asset stores. They are basically image files combined with an XML or a JSON file which holds the names of all the single sprites and their coordinates and sizes so that Corgi can slice the combined image into single sprites. Let me show you the file I got for this example. It's this one. It's an adventurer made by the artist Arvros, which I got from itch.io. It's uh, completely free. You can also get it and I will link it in the description down below. It's quite a large file with all animation steps for running and attacking and even jumping or sliding on the ground. So that's the PNG sprite sheet and that's the XML file. And there you can see the single coordinates for each sprite with its width and height and the name for the sprite. And now what we're going to do is we will read this file and let Corgi handle all the extracting so that we can just use the sub animation that we want, for example, running or jumping or somersault or anything we want. So let's get right into it. So main.kt. First of all, we will read the sprite sheet, which is sometimes also called an atlas. Make sure that you read the XML file and not the PNG file. The next step will be extracting the animation we want out of the atlas. We can do this by using a prefix filter or a regular expression filter, which is applied to the name of the sprites in the XML files. As you can see here, the run part of the animation always starts with run and there are six images. And for example, the jump part consists of four single images and it always starts with jump. So in our case, it's sufficient to use the prefix version of the function. And this function is called like this. Let's do the run animation first. Call the adventure sprites and then take this get sprite animation version. And the prefix is run. So that's the run animation. Let's get the jump animation with the prefix jump. And while we're at it, we can just add a standing animation. And the prefix for this is stand. So it will just look nicer when we or up to display it when it just does nothing so that we have something like an idle animation. So now let's create the sprite which can be assigned these animations for example when we press a button. The default and idle animation will be the standing animation so let's create the adventurer with this. It's just a sp sprite with the default animation stand animation. So now we call just adventure play animation looped and let's see how it looks. Okay, there it is. It is a bit small and actually it doesn't look like an idle animation. Let's see if the XML has some other idle animation frames. Yeah, there they are. Oh, they're just called idle. Let's take these and actually make the animation a bit bigger and place it more to the left. And a bit down. Now let's see. Yeah, that looks better. So this is the correct idle animation. The stand animation seems to be something different. It's a bit fast, so let's take care a of this, we just have to define a sprite display time of maybe 200 milliseconds. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's good. 
So we also got the sprite animation for running and the sprite animation for jumping. So let's display these two. For this we will add a simple updater to the stage. Just check if specific keys are pressed. Let's take the space key for the jump animation. So and actually what I also want is when the jump animation finishes that uh, the standing animation is played again. So let's add um, the event for this on animation completed. And then sure the play animation looped. It's called the stand animation. Play space and he jumps and then he's playing the idle animation again. Actually what I don't like is that he pulls the sword. I think this is um, because the idle animation for the drawn sword and the uh, uh, not drawn sword are somehow mixed up. Maybe we can fix this. Where is it? Here is idle. Uh, this seems to be the regular idle animation and this seems to be the idle animation with the sword. So maybe we can use this as a prefix. Let's check. Yeah, that's a quick fix. That's better. Nice. And I'll also add the run animation. Let's keep right and we play the run animation. We can still jump and we can run. So in this updater, we could also move the adventurer. Now where is my paste? This is a very basic animation extracted from an XML file. 